I'm a guy that's 24. Each day I build some more. I like episode 7 and episode 8. I'm Rich Boy J. Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back with another video and this is going to be update number 34 of the Starkiller base mock build series. First, I'd like to thank those of you who contributed on the live stream via super chat donation. So shout out to Alex McBrick, Matthew T, Lord of Bricks, Bricks by Bricks, Perfectly Legitimate Name, and Math Bricks. You guys are awesome. I can't express how grateful I am that you are willing to contribute. And if you guys are not tuning into the live streams, I urge you to do so. It's a great way for you to not only see the mock early, but to also just hang out with some boyos, talk like a Star Wars. Do I need to say even more? This week was an awesome one. I think I got some really good progress done on the Snoke's phone room on Starkiller base. The floor section is essentially done at this point. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got done this week. All right, we're back at Starkiller and I got actually got a decent amount of work done here on Snoke's throne stand area, specifically um, with these like little ridges that are built into the sides here. I really like the way that came out. You can see it even kind of continues the slope up on the side. I was trying my best to recreate those and I think I actually did a pretty good job here. I really do like the way those came out. Uh, this technique that I used to get these to be sitting on here was actually, I wonder if I have any more of that piece. I actually ended up using this piece right here, um, a piece that previously I kind of looked at and I was like, I don't know exactly how useful that is, but it was pretty critical in being able to design this. Like I would have been able to do it otherwise. It just would have been a lot more complicated. So this definitely simplified things. So I basically just had a couple of these layered up underneath here and I was able to basically connect one side going that way and one side coming this way. That way you still got like the smooth surface here with the tile facing outward on, outward on this side and the tiles facing outward on that side. So that was something that I really didn't even implement the first time. The first time I just had all of them going one direction. And then I ended up with what looked like basically an anti-stud on this side. And I was like, I don't like how that looks. I'd like for that to be smoother. So I came up with that better solution about just basically splitting this assembly in two and having them go in opposite directions. The other thing I worked on was uh, this little assembly right here, which took some time because basically everything here is connected via snot. And if I actually remove these sandwich tiles, I can show you specifically what I'm referencing. So basically, um, with just the way things kind of worked out with snot, the, yeah, the, the sandwich tiles didn't line up perfectly. So that meant I had to do some, some Lego math to basically get these things to line up as they should. So you can see, uh, as I took all those off, um, I use snot bricks on every other one, and then the ones between them are actually these little bracket pieces, because these are offset basically by a half plate because of that little part on the front, and that's what allowed for everything to be lined up. And basically what I was going for here is this little octagon ring that you can see uh, that basically is around Snoke's actual throne there. Uh, it technically should be doubled up, like there's two layers of rings on it. And I, I tried to, to, to play around with that a little bit and it just, it wasn't working out. It was severely complicating things. So I figured it would totally suffice to just have one of these. So that's what I'm working with. And I think once I actually get the entire shape going around, it's gonna look quite good. Like I love these sandwich tiles. I got a bunch of them. So I'm glad I'm able to use them uh, in this mock so far. The one issue that I ran into was basically this, the sizing of this thing. I didn't realize that once I got most of this built that I was actually gonna need to extend the back section basically so the back right here lined up with that tile. That tile is basically how long this side of the octagon is going to be. And what I ended up with was a situation where like if I line this up where I previously was planning on putting it, which is kind of like right here, uh, there's a bit of an overhang over the circle and I really didn't like the way that looked. So that meant that I could do two things. I could either shrink this thing in, like make it more narrow, or I could just bring it forward. That way this actually would not overhang. Uh, bringing it forward presented another issue and that was this little platform right here because it would basically just end up being right on it if I 
ended up putting it where it needs to be, where there's no overhang over there. So what I've actually decided to do is I'm actually gonna leave this uh, platform right here. And instead, I wanna move this platform a little bit closer to the edge of this. I know it's not entirely accurate, but I really don't wanna to have to redesign this because I love the way everything's coming together here. Also really like this design as well. So rather than have to compromise either of them, I'm just gonna move this little forward. It'll be kind of close to these lights, but I really don't foresee it being a problem because I do still have like a brick and a, a, and a tile of clearance here that I can move this and it's not gonna be on this walkway right here or like interfering with the lights. So uh, when we get back, I'm gonna have moved this and possibly have made even more progress on this. Hopefully we can get this entire platform done in this update, that's really my plan. And then move on to other things like working on more of the rings. Um, speaking of which, I actually did get more black tiles in. Uh, still not enough to finish even most of this, but um, I have more orders coming in with these black two by four tiles. So that should also hopefully um, be finished by the time this update comes out. Just depends on when that order gets here. So let's go ahead and move this bad boy right here back and work a little bit more on the uh, throne area. And once again, we get done a lot more progress than originally intended. I did end up moving this platform back and I actually think it looks totally fine. It's not too close to those lights at all. It doesn't cover up any of the important details on the walkway. So good to go with that. And of course I finished the giant throne base section, basically just completed the other half. It was basically just a mirror of the first half, so it wasn't super difficult to complete, but I think it looks incredible. My favorite part of this is still these curved stairs. I just love the way those all come together. Um, there's very minimal gaps in there, and just a cool technique I was able to try out that worked pretty successfully, so I'm a big fan of that. I'm also a big fan of this hexagon shape that came out on there. I think that looks perfect, like it is exactly what I was going for, and these sandwich tile pieces were pretty crucial to making that happen, so very happy that that piece exists. Uh, the next thing I did was I actually finished up the second ring around this uh, big circle section right here. I got an order in that basically had a bunch of these two by uh, four black tiles, so that allowed me to complete this ring. And I, I showed this off before, but in case you're wondering how this actually works, it's basically just two by fours on the one by two bricks that are all connected and curved. And under the two by four is actually, try to pull these up is uh, this two by three wedge plate. So that basically bridges the gap that would otherwise be in there because these are all, you know, slightly uh, separated because of the curve. So that gives you a more seamless, just black ring going all the way across. And that worked out pretty well. Another thing you'll notice that I did was I actually installed all the chairs. I ended up getting the parts to finish off most of them. I still need some one by two tiles for the seat, but for the back part, I got all those uh, black and got pieces in. So we're good to go there. And one thing that was kind of just annoying, I wouldn't say difficult, but kind of annoying to figure out was the placement of these tiles just because I had to basically pull everything up, but I didn't want to use, you know, any more than I had to because this circle in the middle covers a significant portion of the middle of the mock. So rather just than just covering everything with the tiles, um, I tried to bring it up as close to the edge as I could. Um, if you look very, very closely in there, you might see studs, but I think I did my, my best to make sure that, you know, just average viewing angles, anyone inspecting this mock, you wouldn't catch a glimpse of the studs under there. And I ended up laying the tiles basically going all around this build. So it's looking, I think, incredible. I think that the fact that this middle section of this mock is almost completely done now, aside from the, the big smoke, obviously, and it's probably gonna be the last thing we do in this room, but that gives me hope <laughs> that we can actually get this room done in a reasonable amount of time, so I'm happy about that. My next order of business was uh, just building those other ring, and not even rings, because the black section is actually gonna go to the border of the mop, but basically finishing that outer circle, and that made me happy because I was running pretty low on certain slopes in this assembly, so the fact that I had enough to just go ahead and finish this, I don't need any more black slopes, I'm happy about that. So what I'm gonna have to work on now is basically just building more of these. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have one there, one there, 
uh, one here, one here, and then one at the uh, at either side of the very uh, end of the mock. So that'll be a total of six. So right now I'm actually gonna go ahead and build six of those, maybe even build out this section too, cause I'm gonna have to figure out how those are gonna be attached because this is a snot section right here and this is at a slant. Um, that kind of complicates things. Like, I mean, it's not a difficult connection to make, but I know I'm gonna have to consider like, how this is actually going to help hold up the ceiling because there's going to be a ceiling in this room. I actually plan on putting rooms above this one, which means that I'm going to need some sort of brace going up to to the top of the wall. Like there's going to be obviously spaces filled in between these. It's mostly just rock structures, but um, the technique that I'm thinking won't be super sturdy in holding those up. So I'm going to need um, at least a bit of sturdiness coming from these guys. So I'll have to figure out a good way to brace those um, on the positions in this mock to make sure those do a good enough job at holding up the ceiling. So let's go ahead and work on that. All right, we have six of those pillared bases finally finished. It was a repetitive build, but I actually got through them pretty quickly, so I was pretty happy about that. One of the more difficult things about arranging these was actually bracing these ones in at an angle. So you can see I actually used some turntable pieces at the bottom and I didn't really do Lego math to figure it out, but I just did trial and error before I figured out a way to get this to stay at a slant and be locked in because that was important to me. I didn't want to just have it like on a loose hinge. It's going to be a pretty big assembly that goes up pretty tall. So it was important to get that angle like locked in and it's, it's not going to rotate in any way, which is awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. Also got these two at the very end angled. This one over here is angled. You'll notice that these two at the very front are not angled. One, because the way the room is actually kind of situated, this walkway extends further out this way, and they actually, I believe, just keep kind of coming out this way, which means they shouldn't really be angled. And even if they were, I actually like having these not angled because these are actually gonna function as brace points for the ceiling area. This is gonna go up pretty tall and I wanna make sure that I have enough support because there's actually gonna be rooms on top of this one and they're gonna to need to be sitting on you know a decent amount of structure and having this not at an angle allows for far more connection points than just the two turntables that I'm using for that one to have that one angled. So uh, it'll make more sense as we proceed with the build series and you see like the stuff that's gonna be above this. I just want there to be multiple levels in the base. And I wanna make sure I'm not getting in a situation where I literally just don't have enough support at the bottom to hold up what's going to be on the top. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. I did uh, start working on expanding this pillar, just kind of figuring out a design to make this the way it should look. And I, mean, I didn't get too far on it, but um, I like what I came up with. And I think this is gonna be more than sturdy enough to go all the way to the top and hold up the ceiling. So for the next update, you guys should definitely see these pillars get much taller and you'll see more detail implemented into both of those. But that's actually pretty much it for the update. I guess one last thing I did do was I added these black walls here to kind of finish that outer circle. I even added the ones on the back. So if we have like a zoomed out photo like this, you can see this room is really coming together. Like I'm so excited that I'm done with everything here. I just have to build the big snoke, obviously, but we can proceed working on the rock work and the pillars and this room is gonna be done. That is so freaking cool. I think in the next update or at the very least the next two updates, you guys should actually see this room fully completed and that is super awesome to me. So let's go ahead and proceed to the ending segment of the video. And that's gonna finish up the update this week, guys. I hope you enjoy checking it out. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of Star Killer Base. For the next update and the next two updates, I really wanna have the room done, which means I need to finish up the pillars that are on the sides of the room, as well as finish up the walls. And I think that you guys are really gonna like what I'm gonna do with the walls. They're basically big rock formations, and I'm trying out a new technique that I've never done before, and one that I've actually never seen done before. So. Um, I've made a smaller scale kind of demo of it that you guys will see next week and I'm hoping that it works out at a much larger scale because the walls are so huge in that room. There's like big rock formations and I'm hoping that it all works out. So you guys will definitely want to tune in to see that. But that's all I got for you guys this week. If you like what I do, go ahead, support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button. And I'll be back again very soon.